you have come across the classification of eliminations so first i have presented that eliminations may be alpha elimination beta elimination gamma elimination uh, which refers alpha and two leaving groups one with electron pair other without electron pair on same carbon atom it is alpha elimination when two groups are beta to each other mean they are on, present on adjacent carbon on each other this is a beta elimination gamma elimination when they are gamma position to each other so this is something uh, you have come across alpha elimination results in the formation of carbene nitrogen etc gamma elimination doesn't take place in chemical laboratory it takes place in mass spectrometer ionization chamber in fact so gamma elimination is not of our interest at the moment alpha elimination you have already come across the reactive intermediates you have covered carbene nitrogen etc so alpha and gamma elimination is not of our focus but beta elimination is our focus at the moment so beta elimination may be thin elimination if two leaving groups with electron pair and without electron pair they are eclipsing each other means zero degree to each other so that is a thin elimination if both leaving groups are lying at 180 degree to each other that is anti elimination but both conditions involve the involvement of a base this is beta elimination and you have also come across that elimination can take place in two different phases it may be solution phase it may be vapor phase vapor phase mean gas phase solution phase means in liquid phase so when it is solution phase that is we have a solvent and we add all over reagents and substrate and catalyst all right mean all reactant we dissolve in a solvent so it is in the form of a solution and then we are going to heat this up so e2 e1 and e1 cb mechanism are possible but if we are going to convert our reactant into gas phase let's say our our substrate and our other entities but in vapor phase because our catalyst uh, sorry our base is normally a nitrogen base so which has a high melting boiling points so in such a case or it may be a solid so in vapor state we don't need any base this is a very interesting feature that in vapor phase we shall not need any base base shall not be required so but for solution phase we shall need a base so base is exempted in vapor phase so it means we only have our substrate in fact so this substrate shall undergo ei elimination intermolecular or free radical mechanism these are the two possibilities for beta elimination reactions right so this is what i have presented that whenever we are proceeding for elimination reaction elimination reaction always competes with substitution reaction but we have strategy that we can uh, minimize substitution reaction and maximize elimination if we have a strong base poor nucleophile if we are making use of a good base but poor nucleophile then it shall proceed elimination second if we increase the reaction we have seen uh, here there are two reactant base and substrate and products are three one is a olefin second is a protonated base third is x leaving group so in all this x is common among both sn2 and s1 so here we get a product and we get here two products so two products shall have more entropy than the reactant so reactants are common among sn2 and e2 mechanism so in both of these two mechanisms you can see these two are common it is acting as a base in substitution it is acting as a nucleophile in sn2 reactions all right so this is the common both reactants are common one product x negative is also common among them what is the difference difference is here there are two products additional there is only one product in addition to x so here entropy of the system shall be larger entropy shall be positive which favor give free energy 
so energy difference between reactant and protocol shall increase that that will commonly refer to delta g negative so it shall be more negative here but it shall be very close to zero so enthalpy it is depending upon delta h value if delta h value is comparable between 1 and 5 then it shall be and not in reversible otherwise this reaction shall be reversible so this is something that i have bring into consideration we have two things in hand with the help of which we can dominate elimination one is the temperature high temperature elimination shall be favored substitution shall be disfavored second good base not a good nucleophile if we have a good base it shall also favor elimination so having a good base you shall see in the end of this uh, course uh, i shall present which bases are the best for eliminations i shall uh, demass and uh, so many other i shall in db and dbu etc i shall present what these are and what why they are being used because they are very good base but very poor nucleophiles so this is what you have already come across so we have compared the kinetic versus thermodynamic conditions you are already familiar with vladimir markovnikov who has provided this uh, mechanism of addition if you have an olefin if an acid adds so h goes to that terminal which is least substituted so as to generate more stable carbocation this is what we call Markovnikov's addition. This is what you have studied. But in same university, University of Kazan, the Alexander Stadzak was also working here, who was rival to him. So he presented later, two years later, uh, another very good understanding of uh, thermodynamic conditions, uh, thermodynamically controlled on the olefin. He made a very good comparison. So we are having a light of a few flames let's see right so hydrogenation was in fact he introduced that if we have a different olefins let's say r1 r2 r3 r4 these may be hydrogen these may be methyls so let's see if all our alkyl groups here are hydrogen like here so delta hh this is presented in kilojoule per mole right so its value is minus 137 kilojoule per mole so this value is more negative all right so in that case if it is uh, one r1 is methyl rest of the one hydrogen is replaced by methyl you see this value is increasing uh, in fact this uh, uh, regardless of sign this value is decreasing 137 is larger than 127 but in fact it is negative sign with it so when it is one minus 127 this is a larger value than minus 137 the mathematically speaking so if we have two alkyl groups r1 and r4 let's say they are uh, such systems or if we are having uh, trans polyphenes if we are having three alkyl substituted if we have all alkyl substituted you see the value is increasing so this is having higher delta H value. Highest value is for all methyl. It means this compound is more stable because when hydrogen adds, so due to addition of hydrogen, this pi bond break and two new carbon hydrogen bond are formed. Carbon carbon bond dissociation and hydrogen hydrogen bond dissociation involve less energy. But carbon hydrogen two new bond formation results more energy. So when it is liberating more energy, absorbing less energy, so actually this is a exothermic reaction, releasing energy. So he, heat of this is we call heat of hydrogenation. The heat evolves when one mole of an olefin is hydrogenated in the presence of a catalyst to generate an alkane. So when one mole of the olefin we are using, so one mole of hydrogen add results in the formation of this. So the amount of energy released per mole is called heat of hydrogenation. So this is a heat of hydrogenation with different olefin. It means most substituted olefin have 
highest delta H value, which indicates this is most stable value. So most stable olefin is most substituted, and the one which is least substituted means no substitution is there. It is having lowest delta H value. So it means uh, the most substituted is thermodynamically more stable. This is what Alexander uh, says of this answer. So he presented more substituted olefin is thermodynamically more stable than less substituted or unsubstituted olefins. This is what Sats have first introduced in 1872, almost 150 years back. One and a half century ago, he presented this. Right, so at the same time, Hoffman was another scientist who was German, who was an Russian. So he presented his finding uh, as kinetically controlled condition. He said, according to him, let's say I have presented here a comparison between Sarsef and Hoffman. Uh, let's say this is a substrate. This is our starting material. If we are reacting this with, let's say, ethanol, in the uh, sorry ethanol is a solvent but sodium ethoxide is a base long time ago nitrogen bases were rarely used some alkoxidines were most of the time used uh, because when we are reacting ethanol with sodium hydroxide it slowly generates sodium ethoxide all right and it generates in the formation of water molecule for unit because this reaction is done in water ethanol is soluble in water so sodium ethoxide is slowly produced. This sodium ethoxide, one possibility is you see, this is a tertiary carbon. This bromine is attached to a tertiary carbon. It may follow SN1 mechanism if we are doing this reaction at low temperature. But if we are doing this reaction at high temperature, so at that condition, elimination is possible. What happens is bromine shall leave with electron pair and a hydrogen from here shall leave. So hydrogen may be leave from here or it may be removed from here. It depends upon the size of the base. If our base is stronger, it is sterically crowded, sterically crowded, then the, let's say we have two different, this is our reactant, but here we are using potassium tertiary butoxide in tertiary butanol. So tertiary butanol is again solvent like ethanol. Potassium tertiary butoxide is a base, corresponding base. We are reacting uh, tertiary butoxide with potassium hydroxide. So it is this results in the formation of potassium tertiary butoxide slowly in the reaction mixture. So when this is slowly generated, it is typically much crowded. So compare this carbon versus this carbon. These two carbons are identical. Either hydrogen is leaving from here or it is leaving from here. doesn't make any difference. Both shall be the same. So if hydrogen is leaving from any of these carbon, they are primary carbon. But look at this carbon. This is a secondary carbon. So this is sterically more crowded. But this carbon or this carbon is sterically not much crowded. So what happens in such a case? Potassium tertiary butoxide shall remove a hydrogen from the side which is sterically less crowded because it is sterically more crowded. It shall not go to sterically more crowded terminal side. So according to this condition, if we are using potassium tertiary butoxide, you see this olefin is dominating 72% because our base is sterically crowded. And Sadsef, because we are doing this reaction in thermodynamic condition with high temperature conditions, so in high elimination flavors, but this olefin, if you see this olefin and that olefin, this olefin is thermodynamically less stable, but this olefin is thermodynamically more stable. Why this is not formed? Because of steric factor. Because potassium tertiary butoxide is very sterically crowded base. It shall not prefer to go to sterically more crowded side. It shall prefer to go to sterically less crowded terminal side. That's why it is picking up a proton from this carbon or that carbon, not from this carbon, or it is having 28% or four, three ratio one, roughly. 
So three times if it is picking up here, so one time it is picking it from this side. Or you can say the rate of substitution or the rate of elimination uh, with removal of hydrogen from here is three times slower than picking it up from here. So it is easily picked up. It is difficult to pick up because it has a sterically crowded phase. On the other hand, when we are having sodium methoxide, the story is opposite. Again, we are hitting this half month product which is recessive and sad self product is dominating. Why? Because ethoxide is not sterically crowded. So it is approaching this position and making a double bond as its position, which we call a sad self product. More substituted olefin is more stable thermodynamic condition but this half month product is forming less because our base is not sterically crowded so, but this substrate is sterically crowded it can pick up it from there but generating uh, less percentage of the half month product so these are the consideration the half month product dominates due to when the steric crowding of the base increases and when the steady size of the base we are decreasing, then the sads product dominates over half month product. So this is something both are generating olefin, both are undergoing beta elimination, but one is removing hydrogen from here, other is removing from sterically less crowded side. So half month and sads both depend upon the size of the nucleophile if it is sterically very crowded then half month product shall be dominating then the uh, sad cell but if the size of the nucleophile is smaller then sad cell shall dominate over half month what is the size this is small or medium size uh, so it depends more uh, studio control more percentage of sad cell shall be observed if the size of this product. if let's say we replace it with sodium methoxide Ethyl is replaced by methoxide, it shall have more sterically less crowding. So, as a result, sad the product shall increase, half month shall further decrease. This is totally opposite, you see. This is totally opposite. Just we have a different uh, protocol, a different, uh, in fact, size of the substance. All right. So, I have also exemplified another here. We have this amine. This amine is re reacted with idomethane. Why idomethane? Because nitrogen contains one non-bonding electron pair. We can react this with diazonium. If you, uh, sorry, to, we can generate it diazonium, but diazonium generate uh, some other uh, unfavorable condition reaction. The, the carbocation is being, in fact, carbocation is, in fact, undergoing such type of reactions. So rearrangements are also possible that we want to avoid. It is reacted with, first of all, this lone pair shall react with substituting this iodine. This is acting as a nucleophile, making a bond. One hydrogen and one iodine shall leave in the form of HRA, hydroiodic acid. Again, nitrogen still have a non-bonding electron. It shall again repeatedly reacting with another methyl, forming a tertiary amine. Uh, one hydrogen, one iodine shall again remove. So non nitrogen have no hydrogen, but it has lone pair. So it shall transfer lone pair to another methyl. Iodide ion shall leave and we shall get three methyl attached with a nitrogen. Nitrogen making four bonds shall be positively charged. The commonly called ammonium ion. So this is a nitrogen bearing positive charge is a good living group. So it can leave as a good living group, but hydrogen from this side or a hydrogen from this side can be lost. All right, so when we are doing this reaction at high temperature, so then we add silver oxide in water. What is the role of silver oxide? Silver oxide is the salt of silver, which when dissolved in water generates uh, silver hydroxide. So silver hydroxide is generated in water. Silver hydroxide is a base. So hydroxyl ion is the smallest size base. You can't have much smaller than hydroxyl ion base. This is the smallest one. So it can pick up a proton from this side, it can pick up a proton from this side. This is a secondary carbon, this is a primary carbon. Because size of the base is small, so it can pick up from this direction as well, from this direction as well. You see, sad the product is dominating over half month. 
because our base size is very small. So that's why it is generating a double bond here, dominating HSF product. But Hoffman product is separate. It is removing it from this side. All right. So these two products are in fact HSF product is dominating because temperature is high. So thermodynamic conditions are dominating. Uh, the rate of formation of HSF product is slow because this is sterically crowded side. This is sterically less. The rate of formation of this is uh, fast. So it is forming fastly, but it is thermodynamically less stable. So that's why it is not been forming. Anything which is less stable is less formed during a chemical reaction if it is thermodynamically controlled. So this is, I would like to, I have presented the kinetic versus thermodynamic uh, consideration that if we are following thermodynamic condition, high temperature, and we are using a good nucleophile as a, a good uh, a base, then elimination shall be dominating over substitution. Second, if we are having thermodynamically condition, so either we are interested in a thermodynamically controlled Salzef product or Hoffman product. If we are interested in Hoffman product, let's say more less substitutive side, we are interested to eliminate, make an olefin, then we are supposed to make use of a base which is sterically crowded. If we are interested in the dominancy or generation of a Salzef product, then we are supposed to use a small size new uh, base. This is what we can how we can control the generation of an olefin uh, at high temperatures. All right. So this is uh, just a consideration. Whenever keeping in mind elimination is going on, substitution always complete. We can eliminate the substitution reaction. Uh, if we are going to perform a reaction at high temperature and selecting a good base, rather a good nucleophile, right. So this is uh, all about uh, this fundamental knowledge. Now we are going to, I have another example quoted here. Let's see, we are having our, uh, this is our substrate, our elimination. This Cl can leave with the electron pair at high temperature. So it can take a hydrogen from this position. It can take a hydrogen from this position. If you remember, this is thermodynamic. So we have two different products possible. If it takes hydrogen from this side, this is sterically less crowded. See, this carbon is a tertiary carbon. This carbon is a secondary carbon. So if it takes hydrogen from here, it shall generate this one it shall be tri-substituted olefin, just like this. This is tri-substituted olefin. If you take hydrogen from this side, which is typically less crowded side, it shall generate a double bond here, which is a di-substituted olefin. So this is a di-substituted olefin. This is a tri-substituted olefin. As the reaction is under thermodynamic condition, so at such high temperature, the SADZF product is supposed to be more substituted olefin shall be more formed. All right. So as a result, what we are going to do, SADSF product, this is interesting to see what we are expecting. If it is taking hydrogen off from here, this product should dominate because this is a tri-substituted olefin. But if we are doing this here, here we are having a carbon-carbon double bond, but it is di-substituted. So di substituted is less and tri substituted is more. So this should be dominating over this one. But practically, when we perform this, is totally opposite. Zero percent Sarsa product has been isolated, and hundred percent Hoffman we get. Keeping in mind, we are focusing on the substrate and the substrate. Keeping in mind, the this is a acyclic system. This is a acyclic system. Carbon carbon free rotation is possible. But when we are talking about cyclic system, then carbon-carbon free rotation is not possible. If you remember, this system, cyclohexane, exists in two conformers, one chair, another chair. So let's say I have presented this one chair. This group is above the plane. Chlorine and methyl uh, are behind the plane. All three are at axial position. This is unstable conformer. 
but the, in this conformation, if you see there is a hydrogen which is present at equatorial position. So this CL and hydrogen are not 180 degree to each other. So they are not going to eliminate, but we have, we have a hydrogen present at this carbon, one axial, one equatorial. The one which is axial, that hydrogen and this chlorine, you see they are 180 degree to each other. So these two can easily eliminate resulting in a carbon, carbon double bond here, this product. That's why Hoffman product is dominating. But if I, because it is having a rare chances. So if it transmit into another one, like one, this one. So in this case, this chlorine is equatorial. It cannot undergo elimination. This is not fulfilling the requirement. So we have less than one.